This morning, near the end of a years-long saga for justice after the killing of SDPD officer J.D. de Guzman. Today, lawyers make their closing arguments in the trial of the man accused in his death. President Biden ramping up the vaccine requirement for federal workers and pushing private businesses to follow suit. The new mandate he is issuing to employees. And it certainly is hot out there. I'm pinpointing how long these 90s are going to stick around for our inland and mountain areas and the chance for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys. I'm Virginia Shaw. And I'm Jim Patton. Closing arguments have started in the trial of men accused of shooting and killing SDPD officer Jonathan de Guzman and injuring his partner in 2016. ABC 10 News reporter Nate Holmes joining us live now from outside the courthouse. Nate, the district attorney's office, my understanding is that they're addressing the jury right now. Uh, that's right, Virginia and Jim. Good morning. Now, the prosecution began their closing arguments uh, by stating that the act that Jesse Gomez committed was, quote, premeditated. They said that he, quote, thought about it, meant to do it, and he did it. Now, the prosecutor also describes what happens moments before those shots were fired at the two officers. Wade Irwin steps out of the car to do his consensual encounter, uses his icebreaker. Hey, you live in the area? And the defendant, without reaching, without lifting his shirt, gun already in his hand, lifts that gun and shoots him in the throat. Uh, the prosecutor then proceeds yeah. to describe yeah. how yeah. Gomez yeah. continued to shoot inside of the police car where Officer de Guzman was sitting inside. During the closing arguments, the prosecution also laid out all of the evidence the jury will be able to review during deliberations. This includes visual aids, audio and body camera footage that shows responding officers rendering aid to officers de Guzman and Irwin. Now, the defense will get to their closing arguments next, but during the trial, Jesse Gomez's attorney says that the defendant was under the influence of methamphetamines and was in a gang infested area of Shelltown. Gomez says he opened fire on the officers after thinking they were gang members. He claims the officers drove up behind him slowly and asked him something like, where are you from? Gomez stated that's code for something is something bad is about to happen and he feared for his life. Now, once the defense makes their closing arguments, the, cross, the prosecution will have the opportunity to rebuttal. And then once those statements are being made by both sides, then the jury will have the chance to come together and decide if Gomez is guilty or not. And of course, we have been following this trial very closely and we will continue to follow what happens out of the courtroom later on this morning. And we will bring that to you in our later shows. In downtown, Nate Holmes, ABC 10 News. Nate, thank you very much. The Los Angeles Unified School District could be the first major school district in the country to make vaccines mandatory for eligible students. Board of Education will vote today on whether to require students 12 and older to be vaccinated against COVID-19 as a condition of attending school in person. It is likely to be approved because the majority of board members have already said that they are in favor of or are leaning toward the requirement. The LA Teachers Union has also voiced support for a student vaccine mandate. I think it gives me assurance that the people around my kids, the people around us are doing their part to to try and, and stop this virus. California law already requires students to get a number of other vaccinations in L.A. Board members say legal exemptions will still be allowed. Anyone who is not exempt and does not want to get vaccinated will be given an online learning option. Well, today we expect President Biden to expand the vaccine mandate for federal workers. The president will reportedly require all federal employees, including contractors, to get vaccinated. Now, before this, workers could opt out by undergoing regular testing instead, but the understanding is that those will be eliminated. In addition to that change, the president is expected to announce expanded free testing access nationwide and address the U.S. plan for booster shots. Those are slated to start rolling out later this month. Meanwhile, President Biden will also be in California next week to assess the damage from the wildfire still burning around the state. The president is expected to, quote, highlight how wildfire season is now a year-round event because of climate change. 
Following the tour of the fire damaged areas, the president will then join Governor Newsom at a campaign appearance Monday in Long Beach, hoping to convince voters to reject the effort to recall Newsom as that special election day draws near. And this morning, less than a week away from Election Day, we are getting our latest look at how voters feel about the recall. In a 10 News Union Tribune poll of more than 900 likely voters across the state, 54% said that they are leaning toward voting no on the recall, which would leave the governor in office. 41% said they'd vote to remove him, 5% still undecided. If the governor is removed, here are voters that we talked to felt about his replacement. 29% of people who said that they'll vote on a replacement backing a Republican would be Larry Elder. Democrat Kevin Paprath, well, well behind at 9%. Local Republican businessman John Cox right behind him at 8%. And a reminder, ABC 10 News, your source for the special election on September 14th. We'll have coverage throughout the day and into the evening right here on ABC 10. You can also stay up to date on your favorite device like Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, your computer or phone. And to watch, just download the ABC 10 News app or go to 10news.com for the important stories on the biggest issues and all the top candidates. Well, county leaders have announced plans to provide more resources and to help businesses that are struggling in our area. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell is live on Harbor Island. Marie, this all starts with a letter that will be submitted to the Board of Supervisors next month. Yeah, Virginia, both supervisors Nathan Fletcher and Nora Var Vargas will ask uh, the board to initiate the process to create an office that will specifically tailor to business needs. Uh, this is a really In a news conference campaign. Thursday morning with business leaders by their side, both supervisors Nathan Fletcher and Nora Vargas announced their plans to ask the board for more assistance for businesses in the region. This letter would get the ball moving in the effort to create a designated office that will connect business owners with the resources they need. Austin Evans owns his own law firm. He says he's seen firsthand how businesses are being impacted because of the pandemic. It's really been a challenge trying to figure out, you know, where our next business is going to be coming from, where our next clients are going to be coming from, especially when a lot of them shutter up and close their operations down and then you have to kind of figure out where you're going from there. Something that hits very close to home for neighborhoods in San Isidro, where close to 200 businesses have had to close. Austin says the creation of this office would help tremendously, as its goal would be to specifically look at the needs of business owners while making sure resources are offered equitably. Part of the problem is getting those resources out to folks and making not only just that, but also making sure that it's going out to a lot of the small businesses that have really been impacted the, the worst by this all. So again, this letter will be presented to the board next month. The next step would be to vote to create an assessment, making sure that there is a need for this office. Live from Harbor Island, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Marie. Okay. Well, we just had the sun in the studio. We might as well mention it. <laughs> One of our lights was <laughs> flipped open and it was crazy it's bright. It's very bright. Yeah. It's very bright. Getting us a taste <laughs> for what it looks like outside, I right. suppose. Yeah. You know, as we get out after midday, it is going to be hot out there. Unless you're at the coast, it's very comfortable there. We're in the 70s. But Ramona in the 90s right now, Warner Springs, Campo in the 90s, Alpine just shy of the 90s, a lot of mid 80s for our inland neighborhoods, right at 100 in the deserts. And a heat advisory at this point is in effect until tomorrow night for the inland and mountain areas. This is going to get extended. I think it's going to get extended through Monday because we're going to see above normal temperatures through then. The next several hours, we're going to see some low 80s warming up to our coastline and inland neighborhoods, low to mid 90s this afternoon. So some tips to beat the heat, wear light colored, loose fitting clothing, stay hydrated, don't need to tell you that, but also remember your kids and pets and make sure that they are safe as well. Always check your back seat. Clouds building over the mountains already. Pinpoint that chance for showers and thunderstorms in your full forecast. Jim. Megan, thank you very much. And those hot temperatures prompting another flex alert today. Californians are asked to keep energy usage low to keep the power grid stable. The alert lasts from 4 to 9 p.m.